All right, hey everybody, we have uh, Strauss here for you. Like usual, please ask through the, uh, raise your hand through the Zoom call and then we will uh, call on you. So who has the first question? Mark Zuckerman, MassInSports.com. Hey, Steven. Uh, you're, you've over the years really learned how to build a program that's designed to be, you know, for a six month season to make 35 starts. This obviously is not that. Uh, how have you gone about trying to, to tweak that program and is it, how much of an adjustment is it? Um, yeah, I mean, you're kind of just in uncharted waters here right now. And, you know, you go with uh, what the local, you know, government allows. And um, I was here in Virginia for pretty much the entire lockdown. So, um, there was a uh, many days thrown into a net in the backyard and playing catch with my wife, but uh, you know, it is what it is. And so I'm just excited to be back here with the guys. Do you feel like you are where you would normally be two weeks before opening day or, or is that not possible to be at that position at this point? I mean, it, it's, it's tough to say. I think, you know, I, I did my best to stay, stay ready and um, you know, it's just about getting built up and um you know, it's arms feeling good. It's it's feeling strong. So I think it's just a matter of uh, getting that little bit of extra extension in your delivery that you. It's kind of hard to simulate when uh, you know, I was pretty much thrown into a net. So. Next up, Todd Divis, NBC Sports, Washington. Hey, Stephen. Um, can you? tell us anything more specifically about what you were doing during all this downtime i mean it, it was months obviously uh and, and guys were trying to figure out different ways to do different things and as you said you're throwing into a net but what else were you doing were you out running in the streets of virginia or were you lifting at home yeah i was uh i'm pretty lucky i have a you know gym set up at the house and i have everything i need so um early i did i from the conditioning and the strength training aspect uh that was very consistent to what I normally do in the off season. Um, you know, as there was, you know, occasional running out outside, but I like to do that more all in one spot down in the basement. So, um, yeah, I was pretty fortunate. Um, and there's going to be a designated hitter this year in the national league. Uh, can you enlighten us to how you think that's going to influence you as a, as a pitcher, if at all, and also, are you going to miss being at the plate personally and getting some hacks in? Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's understandable. And I think that really benefits our ball club. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't change anything as far as, you know, how you treat each hitter. Uh, it's just another one you got to focus on. Uh, I would say that's probably something that Davey's got to consider and how he, you know, manages bullpen and manages the game. But again, that's, that's, know on his plate not mine next up jessica camarado mlb.com hey steven two questions for you the first being what are some uh, criteria or boxes that you have to check off during these workouts in order to be ready for the start of the regular season like a number of pitches thrown or a number of bullpens or sim games thrown like what what are your to do's before opening day um, I mean, at, at this point, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like a mad dash. So it's try and get as, as many reps as you can and uh, get up to, you know, as close to game speed as possible. But, you know, we know the clock's ticking. So it's just a matter of uh, doing as best you can to, you know, listen to your body, but at the same time, you know, get built up. Thank you. And second question, we saw some fancy rings all over social media this morning. Um, did you receive your ring? And if so, what was your reaction? Uh, yes, I did. And it was uh, very special to see. I got a little nervous at first because on the outside of the box that it came in, my, ne my last name was spelled wrong. Um, so luckily it was spelled correctly on the ring. So I was, I was pretty happy about that. Next up, Moises Linares, NBC is four in DC. Hey, Steven, uh, congratulations. I'm sure it's a great day for all of you guys. Can you walk us through the moment you, you see the box and, and you take a look at that ring? We have seen it on Twitter. We have seen it online. But what is it like to finally have it in your hands? Uh, it's, it's pretty special. 
You know, you, you just look at all the little things that they put on the ring to kind of commemorate uh, some of the big moments of the season. And it kind of just takes you right back to that moment. And uh, uh, they did, they did a great job on it and, and they really put a lot of time and effort into making it something special. And um, I can't wait to get it home to show my kids. Does it matter that it wasn't a traditional ring ceremony? Does it make it any different for you guys? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that we couldn't have done it in front of a sellout crowd and because the fans were just so special to us down the, down the stretch there last year. Um, but at the very least, you know, it was great to be in the clubhouse and uh, see the reactions from my teammates uh, when they got to open theirs as well. Reminder, if you have a question for Steven, raise your hand through the Zoom call. Is there anything else? Uh, Todd Divis, NBC Sports Washington. Steven, in the uh, health protocol booklet that the operations manual that the league put out, there's going to be a lot of reliance on individual players to do specific things when they're not at the park. Um, and so when you look at that as a group, does that like need to be discussed internally? Is there some self-policing going on there? Or you're just going to try to rely on your teammates and assume that they're all doing the best they can to stay healthy and keep everyone around them healthy? Um, yeah, I mean, we haven't really had that discussion yet, but I think everybody understands the, the world that we're living in right now. And, um, you know, none of us, none of us want to get it. And I think it's just, you know, naturally we, want to avoid you know large crowds and being in situations that might put us uh get us get us exposed to it so um you know we're really just kind of excited for the season and and ready to get back into the swing of things but um i'm sure if you ask a lot of guys around here when you're in the middle of a season it's uh it's like clockwork you know you you go home when you're done and you come back the next day so it's not like you're spending a lot of time doing doing things out around town did you ever consider not playing this year because of that? No, um, you know, I think it's, it, I'm pretty fortunate, you know, that, you know, I do have family members with pre-existing conditions, but, um, you know, they are, they are all back uh, across the country. So uh, I keep tabs on them and I make sure that they're, you know, they have what they need, but they're very excited to watch baseball on TV. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to get back out there playing for them. Thank you. Jessica Camarado, MLB.com. Steven, I think the word that you used to describe this was kind of a mad dash getting ready uh, for the start of the season. So how do you balance that, like, we only have X number of days before opening day with I have to still listen to my body and, and follow the routine and kind of do, like, the gradual buildup? Um, I mean, it, in, any, in any situation, as, as you get older, you have to do a better job of listening listening to your body and knowing that, you know, what's, where's, where's the fine line between too many reps and not enough. And, um, you know, that, that doesn't change in this situation. I just think, uh, you know, again, it's, it's a crazy time right now. And, uh, you know, if we can go out there and provide some relief, uh, for the fans, something fun for them to watch on TV, that's, that's the big purpose here. So, um, biggest, biggest thing for every player here is just go out there and compete and give it everything that they have. Adam Zalanko, Washington Times. Hi, thank you very much. I'm sorry uh, I missed most most of the Zoom was Zoom was acting up on me, but I'm I'm here now. Now, uh, I don't know if you've been asked this or if you've even thought about this, Stephen. But one thing I wanted to ask you: um, have Have you given any thought to toward the end of the year talking about baseball, talking about stats in particular? You know, are are awards going to mean the same thing? Like a Cy Young, whoever wins the Cy Young this year only had to pitch 60 games. Maybe they have like <laughs> six wins on the record or, or 10 starts or something like that. Do you think that there's any argument that they'd be devalued or you just, do you not buy into that? Um, I mean, that's tough to say, you know, those are, I, I don't really have any say in, uh, you know, how those awards are divvied up or, or how they're, evaluated. Um, I would say from a pitching standpoint, maybe it'll give some relievers a little bit more of an opportunity to win one. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that there's some guys out there that might be lobbying to pitch in all 60 games. So that'd be pretty interesting to see. 
Yeah, I hadn't thought of it that way. And if I if I could just ask one more uh, question, um, you you obviously you've been around this team a long time. Given that the World Series finally happened for the for this franchise last year, um, does that kind of validate the the struggle you you got to witness for so many years, uh, 2014, 2016, 17 of of coming up short in the playoffs? Um, just for, if you can give me your, your you know your long term perspective on that, because you're one of the longest tenured players on this team. Um, yeah, I mean, there was, there was definitely some heartbreak, uh, for this franchise in the past, but I think the, the greatest thing, you know, about this organization is that they continue to bring in, uh, great talent, great players, uh, great coaches, and we've really had just a, a good nucleus and a good group of, of young guys constantly be coming up every few years and contributing, um, so, I mean, winning last year was, was great, but I think, you know, a lot of the guys that were a part of the, the failures or the disappointment in past uh, post seasons weren't even really on the team. So it was kind of like a fresh start. All right, and we'll finish up with Byron Kerr, MassInSports.com. Hey, Steven, it's great to see you again. Um, when you look at this uh, schedule of 60 games and the fact that we're playing baseball, do you get greedy uh, and – and your mentality of trying to get back-to-back -back championships. I mean, is that the only reason you play baseball or are you just happy uh, to be here? How greedy are you guys to try to try to win this thing in 60 games? Um, I think, I think the focus last year, um, because we started out so poorly was to just play, start playing good baseball on a consistent basis. Um, and then the results kind of happened and, and that was, an extension of us putting in the work and, and grinding through a 162 game season. Um, it's going to be interesting just to see kind of how we start off because there's really no time to just, you know, make an adjustment. So it's, it's kind of uncharted territory. So, you know, I think we got to be ready to hit the ground running and we're doing everything we can to do that. Um, but again, kind of like what happened last year, you know, we're going to let the chips fall as they may and uh, you know, hold our head heads high for it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Stephen. You're good. Right, uh, thanks, everybody, I will um, I'll give you a heads up when Davey's close. It might be a little bit, um, so hang tight, and I will give you guys an update as soon as I can.